The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 829. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to a brand new season of the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a very special guest. She is my niece, who is an actress, commercial model, and singer. I'm super excited to have her here today on the Tao of Self-Confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Shania Gomez. Hi, Shania. How are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Yeah, hi, Sheen. So uh, thank you so much for having me after hearing so much about the Tao of Self-Confidence. I'm so happy that I finally actually get to be a part of it. So yeah, like you mentioned, you know, right now I grew, I was born in Ireland, then I was raised in Canada and currently I'm in the Philippines acting and just pursuing my dreams here, performing. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And can you share your cultural background? I am half Filipino, half Italian. I never really grew up knowing much about my Italian side, I was raised purely like with my Filipino cultural background. Of course, I also was greatly influenced by the places that I was raised, like Canada. Thanks for sharing that. And Shania, what's your favorite self-confidence quote? So this quote is that when you first hear it, not many would think that it's about self-confidence. But when I heard it, I, I actually like fell in love with it right away. So the quote is, you accept the love you think you deserve. So that actually has a lot to do with self-confidence because sometimes when you allow people, especially people that you love in a relationship to treat you badly, it actually can say a lot about yourself and your self-confidence. In a way, it kind of says that you don't have that much respect for yourself if for lack of better words like you don't have that much self-worth that you're allowing people to to treat you like that thanks for sharing that and i think that's a great quote and it really does tie in with self-confidence and how you see yourself because self-confidence is about perception and so like if you only love the good parts of yourself you're going to attract someone in your life who only loves the good parts of you and not all of you and to love yourself is to love the good bad and the ugly and That's what makes it all beautiful. So I really love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? Yeah, so actually, just like you mentioned, for me, self-confidence is accepting everything about yourself, especially the bad stuff. And it's actually self-confidence is not a destination. Like it's not when you get there, you're done. You have self-confidence and your life is great. No, it's actually something that you have to constantly work on and something that you're constantly trying to make yourself better. Self-confidence for me is knowing that you have faults and just trying to better yourself and knowing and knowing that you have insecurities and just accepting it and loving yourself for those insecurities, especially when you have people that you love or the people that truly care about you, they're with you and they accept those things yourself. And there's another thing that I really enjoy. It's like one, there's this one thing that I saw that was like, oh, if there are some things that like, would you ever say like, oh, you're overreacting or you're being, you're being like stupid to like a child or to like somebody else. So if you wouldn't say those things, then why would you say those things about yourself? Why would you bring yourself down if, you would never say that to somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And I think also as women, especially Asian women, we're very hard on ourselves. And so also society is pretty hard on, on, on women in general. Like if you go after something you want, you know, you're labeled as aggressive or too much. But if a man does it, you know, they're confident. So it's really important for us to realize what we're doing is something that we want to do. And it's something that can help bring an impact to the world and realize that, you know, Every single person who go, goes out there and do, does their own thing has insecurities. Some also goes through self-doubt. And that's why it's so important to work on your self-confidence every single day because it's a, like a roller coaster. Sometimes you're okay. Sometimes you're not okay. Sometimes you're happy. Sometimes you're sad. And that's all a part of life. So I really like your definition. And Shania, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Yeah. So like I mentioned, it's something that you're constantly working up to. So till this day, self-confidence is still something that I'm working on. But for sure, there's definitely is there definitely is a difference from before when I was like younger. 
So I would say my life before I just discovered self-confidence was I really relied so much on on other people. So, you know, growing up as a generation generation Z, you know, a lot of people in my generation, we grew up with social media. We grew up with with filters, Snapchat filters. We grew up with Photoshop and like I always grew up thinking, you know, the more followers you have, the more likes on your Instagram you have, it means the more cooler you are, the more self-worth you have, or the more friends you have. And, and it was really a toxic way of thinking, to be honest. And I remember when I first moved to the Philippines, it was so, so incredibly hard for me because, like I said, my mindset was the more friends you have, the more self-worth kind of like that. So when all my friends slowly started, I started slowly started losing friends because, you know, distance. I really, I really went to like a really dark spot i know it was like only like really i was only 14 which is like crazy thing to think a crazy thing to say but th- these are the times where your brain is getting shaped for the rest of your life right this is the time that your brain really helps you turn into who you are so when that time when i was thinking that you know oh no like i'm i'm losing i'm losing friends i'm my instagram followers are not as much as all these other people like i literally am nothing like i i'm just a nobody which is crazy, but that was the way it was. And, you know, kind of like looking, looking back at it now and like, I've, I've actually met some of these so-called influencers now or some of my, like, you know, some of the influencers that have like millions of followers, some people that have like hundreds of thousands of followers and even myself that some people would look at me and they, they only know me through my social media. They would think that, you know, life is so perfect and their life is so perfect, but knowing them and knowing myself it's actually crazy thinking that that's actually not their reality they obviously just post what they want people to see so i think although social media can be very inspiring for some people we have to be really careful about what we post because it could also be very toxic to young children's minds and yeah so then it really just took me a while to discover those friends it's about quality not quantity and Instagram followers does not just des- describe your worth because you know at the end of the day I don't know it's it's it's, it's hard to explain but I feel like you you know what I mean. <laughs> no, totally, and you know, social media like I mean, it, like you mentioned, it can be used for good, but sometimes it can it can be very toxic. There was reports saying that eighty percent of thirteen year olds download some form of filter app so that they could look better in their photos and not just happening to your generation, it happens to everyone, right? When we see a picture on Instagram, it's filtered, it's picture perfect. Well, we don't know what goes behind closed doors. And, you know, a lot of teenagers go through so many things, especially in this world of social media, you know, everything is instant gratification. And so like you mentioned, if you don't get 100 likes on your Instagram post, it's like, you feel like you're nothing, you feel like you're a loser. But like you mentioned, quality over quantity. And what was that point in your life when you realized you were more than enough to go out there and be who you are, be your authentic self? What was your aha moment? My aha moment was, it took me a while to figure out, to be honest, it really did. But I would say it was when I was in the Philippines, maybe a few years, actually, that I was living in the Philippines here by myself. It took me a while, but I realized that you know, these so-called people that I called my friends that I thought would, that, you know, the more friends I had, the cooler I was, they actually, they didn't care about me at all. They were just, they were like more of an acquaintance than a true friend. If something happened to you, they wouldn't really care. A lot of the time, some of these friends actually will just contact me and be like, oh my gosh, like, oh my God, you're so famous now. Like, how are you? And I'll be like, well, first of all, I'm not famous, but (laughs) like, you know what I mean? Like, there's just like a lot of fake people. And I realized that that toxicness that they brought into my life was not worth it. And actually having those small handful of people, my family, like you guys, you know, my family, my handful of friends, knowing that they, they stayed with me through this whole journey, through me at my lowest point going to the Philippines to even like when I thought was my highest point in Canada, when I had all these friends and I had all these likes and everything, I realized they really liked me for who I am, like truly who I am. And they really loved me for who I was. And it kind of helped, it helped me 
I, I allowed me to focus more on myself and more how to better myself instead of trying to compare myself to all these Instagram models and everything. It allowed me to be the best version of myself. And, you know, I feel like sometimes without even knowing it, surrounding yourself by those people it really affects you. For, like if you surround yourself with good people, even if you don't, if you don't realize that you are being affected, you are allowing yourself to absorb that positivity. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And it's so true, right? There's so many people out there sometimes who only are there for you for the good times and not the bad times. And true people are there with you through thick and thin because we go through so many challenges in our lives. We go through dark moments. We go through happy moments. And when you have that circle of friends who always have your back or your family who will constantly support you no matter what it makes a huge difference. You have your cheering squad. They're there for you when you just need even an outlet to talk to, especially during this crazy time of the pandemic, you know, we definitely need that that true support where we can just turn to because mental health has always been such a huge topic and it's always been a stigma in many cultures. So we have to learn to talk about some of our feelings to just kind of let it out and heal in the process. And, you know, because of your realizations, what's your life been like now? I would say, you know, although nothing is perfect, I would say my life right now is a lot better than, you know, a couple of years ago which is, you know, sometimes it's just so crazy thinking about the things that are coming out of my mouth right now and then just thinking, okay, I'm only 19 years old. How bad could my life really have been? But, you know, like I said, for for a young child, you know, something as small as that could mean the world to them, which could affect them, you know, even though I know there were bigger problems out there in the world. I would say my life now, although I'm still working on self-confidence always and working on bettering myself, but I, I do feel a lot better about myself. I did have that time to to work on myself. I would say now I'm a little more accepting of my flaws and which is better because since I accept them, it allows me to better them. It allows me to better myself. Now I no longer I no longer care so much about, oh, that girl has more followers than me, or oh, that person gets more likes on their Instagram on their Instagram post, but we have the same followers, or something as silly as that. Because, you know, a lot of the times like I said, even though I met some of these people that if I were to just before I met them looking at their social media, I thought, wow, their life was so perfect. They literally have nothing to to be sad about. But after meeting them, I realized every person has their own problems. And of course, they're just posting the good things on social media. They're just posting what they want you to see. So I guess now I would say, you know, if sometimes if I don't let's say if I don't get invited to a party or something like that, it won't, I don't really take it as personal because I, I know that sometimes people don't do things personally because I used to take everything personally. <laughs> but some people just sometimes it's just either it slipped their mind or just it wasn't as big of a deal for them or, you know, so now I just, I really just focus on myself and I, I find myself being happier. I find myself slowly getting better, slowly but surely. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. And I think, you know, when it comes to confidence, it doesn't really matter what age you're in. Everyone goes through something, especially, you know, with teenagers nowadays, it's definitely needed to have more support systems for them because that's at a time where, you know, you can start molding yourself into the person you want to become instead of, you know, maybe finding out later in life, right? Which is still not bad, but it's if you can start now, why not? Right. And so age for me, I don't think age is age is nothing but a number. So to, to have you here and talk about these issues is important because there's people out there who feel the same way you were feeling back then or is going through something. And especially in the world of social media, right? The mental health aspect of it has been horrifying, right? Even through this whole pandemic, they were talking about how people are getting plastic surgery because they're having Zoom dysmorphia where they feel like they just don't look good enough being on constantly on zoom all the time. So these are these are actual things. And this is something we need to bring up and talk about and realize everyone is beautiful as themselves as their authentic selves. So I really love that you mentioned all that. And you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self confidence, what would be that one tip you'd give to her? I guess I would say, you know, there's really a lot, there's really a lot of things to say. Sometimes it just slips your minds and then you're like, oh, I should have said that after. I guess one thing I can say is to just surround yourself. I, I constantly always say this, surround yourself with the people that truly love you, that truly care about you. And 
I guess to just, you know, it's okay to be sad. Sometimes it's okay to be upset. You know, don't, don't beat yourself up about, you know, oh, I'm upset about this. I shouldn't be upset or like, oh, how could I be feeling this way? No, sometimes what you need to do is just accept those feelings and just allow yourself to be sad, allow yourself to be upset for that moment. Right. And then don't, but don't allow it to overstay its welcome. And I guess what I can say is just, although it's hard, just take things one step at a time. Rome wasn't built in a day. It's the small things that can make a big difference. It it really is, you know, sometimes just sometimes if brushing your hair or curling your eyelashes, if that's the one small thing that makes you feel beautiful, then why not do it? Do the small things that make you happy and just focus on the things that make you happy. And I wouldn't say ignore the bad things. I would say embrace the bad things and allow that to motivate you to become the better you. Thanks for sharing all those tips. And I also believe that, you know, the small actionable daily steps is what yield the big results. Like you mentioned, Rome wasn't built in a day and we have to keep reminding ourselves that. So building self-confidence will be overnight as well. So thanks for sharing those tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and the work you do, is there any social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, so you guys can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. They're all Shania Gomez, which is S-H-A-N-A-I-A-G-O-M-E-Z. So Shania Gomez, that is on most all of my social media accounts. As much as possible, I do try to spread positivity on my accounts because, you know, I think that's what the world needs right now. So, yeah, everyone's welcome. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Shania, you can also head on over to the selfconfidence.com and search for Shania's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Shania today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us and her wisdom. So thank you so much, Shania. Thank you so much, Sheena. I really, really appreciate you having me here on the Tao of Self-Confidence today. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show today. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up Book by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. <laughs>